Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to go over how to do your monster genetics lab. So if you go into your biology class, you should see in the classwork section under week two, your last assignment is your monster genetics lab. So you will open up this tab, the monster genetics lab tab, and it should say student copy of monster genetics lab. So that's what you're going to click on and it's going to make you your own copy. So I have my own copy over here. So this is what the monster genetics lab looks like. This is the first slide. When you open up, it should look like this. The directions are to start on Thursday, today, whenever your class starts, and it's due Friday. So I know we don't have school on Friday. I think that if you work hard, this will only take you one period, but if you need extra time, you have until tomorrow at midnight to turn it in. You need to fill in the boxes that look like this, type here, and when you're done, turn it in on Google Classroom. You can read the background, but there are three parts to this lab. So this is the procedure for part one. Step one is to flip a coin twice to determine the genotype for each trait and record it in the data table. Heads equals allele one, tails equals allele two. So you don't need a coin, anything with a front and a back or a top and a bottom. If you can flip it, just choose one as heads and one as tails. It will make more sense when we see the example on the next slide. So, example, if you flipped heads twice, your monster will have two copies of allele 1 for his genotype. So let's say I flipped this coin and I got heads. Okay, I look at allele 1, which is heads, and that allele is capital E. So I put that capital E as the first allele in the genotype. Then I'll flip it again, and I got heads again. So I have another capital E. So flip two made the second capital E. So my genotype is capital E, capital E. That's step one. Step two is to determine the phenotype resulting from the allele pair for each trait. So we have the genotype right here, big E, big E, or capital E, capital E, and we need to figure out what phenotype that corresponds to. So if we look at allele 1, capital E, and because it's a capital, it's dominant, is two small i's. So with the genotype, capital E, capital E, we're going to have a monster with two small i's. If the monster was capital E, lowercase e, it would also have two small i's, because two small i's is dominant. If the if the coin flip caused us to get lowercase e and lowercase e, then our monster would have one large i. And step three is just to repeat steps one and two for each trait and complete the female monsters table one. So if you go to the next slide, you'll see table one, table one continued, and then table one continued again. Okay. So I'm going to go through one example, flipping this coin here, just so that you guys can see it again in case the first time didn't make sense. So I'm going to flip this coin, and I got heads. Heads is allele 1, so heads is two small i's or big E. So in the genotype, I'm going to type big E. Okay, now I flipped the coin, and I got tails. Tails is allele 2. So allele 2 is lowercase e, so I'm going to type a lowercase e there. So now I know that my genotype is uppercase e, lowercase e. Now we have to determine the phenotype. So based on this genotype, big E, little e, since the capital letter is dominant, our monster is going to have two small eyes. I'm going to do the next two examples in this video because I don't know if you understood incomplete and co-dominance from the reading, but that was in the reading yesterday. So just in case you don't understand this, we're going to go over it together right now. Okay, so incomplete dominance is when the two traits, 
So red and white, when they mix. So when red and white mix, they'll make pink. Okay, so let's flip a coin. Okay, first one is heads. So I'm going to have a capital R because heads, heads is a little one and that's a capital R. Okay, I'm gonna flip it again. And I got tails. Okay, I got tails again. So allele two is tails. So my next allele is R apostrophe. R apostrophe. So when the trait is incomplete, then in if you get two alleles that are different or heterozygous, these two traits are going to mix. So red and white mix together to make pink. If you had two capital R's, that monster would be red. If you had two capital R apostrophes, your monster would be white. But if you have one capital R and one capital R apostrophe, the traits blend and make the monster have pink eye color. Now for a third example, skin color. This trait is co-dominant. That means that both of the alleles will be seen at the same time. Okay, so it could be like a green and blue striped monster or something where you see the green and the blue. You see both colors in their skin color, but both colors are separate. Okay, so let's flip a coin. I got tails. Tails is allele two, so tails is capital B. So I would type a capital B here. Okay, let's flip it again. I got tails again. So allele two is tails, which is capital B. So my genotype is capital B, capital B. My phenotype will just be blue because capital B stands for blue. So this monster will have a blue skin color. If the monster was GG, the monster would be green. If the monster was GB, the monster skin color would be green and blue. Let's move on to procedure part two. Procedure part two. The female monster, which is in table one, what we just filled out, and the male monster, which is in table two below, plan to have baby monsters. And they are interested in finding out the probability that their offspring will have each trait. So step one of part two is to fill in the missing genetic information in the table for the male. The first two are done for you. Here's table two. So this is genotypes and phenotypes for the male monster. The first two are done already. So let's look at how we did this. Eyes is the first trait. The genotype was little e, little e. That makes a phenotype of one large eye. The reason we know that is if we go back up to the female's table, we see little e, little e is one large eye. So that's how we filled that in. Eye color is incomplete. So we have a R apostrophe, R apostrophe. That means the phenotype will be white. Because remember, if we go to table one, we see R apostrophe makes a white eye color. Okay, now back to the examples. We'll do two examples together that weren't already done. So skin color is co-dominant and the skin color is green. We have to figure out what the genotype is gonna be. Remember, we have to keep in our minds that the monster is green. And then we'll go back to table one and look at what genotype is green. So G is green and this is not regular dominant, it's co-dominant. So both alleles have to be G in order for the monster to be green. Because if it was G, B, then the monster would be green and blue. But the monster is only green. So the, the alleles are both gonna be G and that will make a genotype that is G, G. Finally, we'll do one more together. Tail shape, the tail shape is straight. So we have to remember straight 
in our brain and go back up to the table. So a uh, capital C is curly and a lowercase c is straight. We can see because this one's capital and this one's lowercase uh, that this is just a regular dominant trait. So it's just regular Mendelian genetics. So if the tail is straight and straight is recessive because it's a lowercase letter, then we need two recessive alleles to show the recessive trait. So if the tail is straight, our genotype is going to be lowercase c or little c, little c. And then you guys can fill in the rest on your own. Now for part three. Part three, you will need to create Punnett squares to predict what traits would result from a cross between the female and male monsters from the lab. Then answer the following questions. You need to see the example on the next slide. Let's look at the example now. The example, the question is about the eyes. What percent of offspring will have only one eye? Well, we can't just say that right now. We have to make a Punnett square first. So the female monster genotype that we got for the first one was capital E, capital E. You have to look back in your table to find that. So, well, we got capital E, lowercase e in our table, but in the example, we have capital E, capital E. This is, so we're just doing an example. So it's from the example. So female monster is capital E, capital E, but you would look in your table to find out the genotype of the female monster for her eyes. The male monster, we're going to look in the table for that. So the male monster's genotype for eyes is little e, little e. So we have to take one parent, put it at the top of the Punnett square, and take the other parent and put it on the side of the Punnett square. Then we do the Punnett square like normal where we bring down the letters on the top and we bring across the letters on the side. And our boxes are all filled Every offspring will be capital E, lowercase e. Notice they're all the same. So now we have to answer the question, what percent of offspring will have only one eye? Well, let's go back to our table. Let's go back to table one. Capital E is dominant and it's for the trait two small eyes. Lowercase e is recessive and it's for the trait one large eye. So I just put that in a little table here so we could remember when we're talking about it. Two small eyes, because that's that trait is dominant, could have the genotype capital E, capital E, or capital E, lowercase e. A monster with one large eye will have to have the genotype lowercase e, lowercase e. And it's asking about only one eye. So how m many monsters or what percentage of monsters will have only one eye? We are going to say 0% because if we look at each box and each box represents an offspring, none of them are lowercase e, lowercase e. None of the boxes are lowercase e, lowercase e. So that means none of the offspring or 0%, there's a 0% chance that the offspring will have one large eye. However, there's a 100% chance that the offspring will have two small eyes. The question is asking about what percent of offspring will have only one eye. So the answer is 0%. Let's do one more example where we fill in the Punnett square together. So we just did eye shape or like number of eyes. Now let's do eye color. The question asks, what percent of offspring will have red eyes? So let's look in our charts. Our female offspring for eye color is capital R, capital R apostrophe. So let's put the female on top with capital R, capital R apostrophe. Then let's look at what we got for our male monster. Our male monster, his eye color genotype is R apostrophe, R apostrophe. So let's go fill that into the Punnett square. R apostrophe, R apostrophe. So we have the female monster's genotype on top, the male monster's genotype on the side. Now we are ready to fill in the Punnett square. So this big R comes down 
our apostrophe comes across, this our apostrophe comes down, this our apostrophe comes across, this R comes down, this our apostrophe comes across, this our apostrophe comes down, and this our apostrophe comes across. Our Punnett square is filled in now. So for the sake of this question, let's go through each of the possible phenotypes. So our possible phenotypes are red, pink, and white eyes. Right, those are three possible phenotypes. So what will the genotype for red eyes be? Let's look back at our chart. Red eyes are capital R. White eyes are capital R apostrophe. And this is a code, or no, this is an incomplete dominant trait. So a pink eye would result from an R and an R apostrophe together. So that is how we figure out what the genotypes will be for each color. So a RR genotype will cause red eyes, an R and then R apostrophe genotype will cause pink eyes, and an R apostrophe R apostrophe genotype will cause white eyes. So let's see what percent of offspring will have red eyes, since that's what our question is asking. What percentage of offspring will have red eyes? So we are looking for RR. This box is R, R apostrophe, so that's not red. This box is R apostrophe, R apostrophe, not red. This box is R, R apostrophe, still not red. And this box is R apostrophe, R apostrophe, not red. None of the boxes show the red genotype, R, capital R, capital R. So 0% of the offspring will have red eyes. 0% of the offspring will have red eyes. Let's do the other two just for fun. How many will have pink eyes? So R, R apostrophe is pink eyes. Or if you wrote it the other way, or R apostrophe R, same, same thing, just a different order, will still be pink. So let's look. This one's pink, so that's 25. This one's pink, that's 25. This one's not, this one's not. So 25 plus 25 equals 50%. 50% will be pink. And then let's look at these boxes. We know these two are pink and these two are white. So this box and this box is white. So again, each box is worth 25%, a 25% chance. So 25 plus 25 equals 50%. And you can always check your work by if you add all the three um, possible phenotypes, or if there are just two possible phenotypes together, you will always get 100%. So your um, percentages should always add up to 100. If they don't, then that means you went wrong somewhere. So let's check. 0 plus 50 plus 50 equals 100%. So we are good to go. Now all you have to do to finish the lab is answer the rest of the questions on the slides. And we'll go to slide 24, and here you can see it says, for extra credit, draw your monster or the offspring. However you want to do it, go for it. I gave you some options for how to do it, but if you have a different way of doing it, you can do it whatever way you want. But you can put the drawing of your monster on this slide, and if you draw your monster in some way, I will give you some extra credit. Okay, that is all for this YouTube video on how to do your monster genetics lab. If you have questions, remember you can call or email me or ask a friend. And also, if I didn't explain something in a way that makes sense to you, just Google it and see if you can find any other YouTube videos of people making Punnett squares. I know there are a lot out there. Okay, have a good day everyone. Bye.